If thy brother trespass against thee, go tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Well, that just means, you know, don't tell it to everybody else first. What do we do? When our brother trespasses against us, we tell everybody under the sun. <laughs> I'm a hurting. He hurt me. Amen. Hey, go tell him his fault between him and thee alone, thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Amen. Good to gain your brother, isn't it? But if he will not hear thee, take with thee one or two more. Amen. And the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it to the church. <laughs> the King James, Shane, says, tell it unto the church. Amen. That was my paraphrasal there. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. Amen. Verily, I, I'm not done with that yet, though. Jesus is not done with it yet either. He'll give it a little more treatment a little bit later on. Verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall... Uh, ye shall bind on, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. It's good to have heaven backing you up in what you're doing, isn't it? Amen. We need God helping us to do things. Come on. Amen. So we're gonna to have to be in agreement with heaven. Amen. Gonna to have to be going in the direction God's going. Amen. Again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, they shall ask. It shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. How many want him to say amen? How many want him to say amen? amen? Hallelujah. You know the conditions, don't you? I just read them to you. Ha. Then came Peter and said to him, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him till seven times. I told you he's going to treat that a little further. Hey. Jesus said, I say unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times. I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. If he... <clears throat> Amen. Sins against you, seventy times seven. Praise God. <clears throat> I'd like to ask you tonight, do you agree? Do you agree? <laughs> I went into a church a while back. I didn't know one thing was going on. They was in a revival, and I could tell just as soon as I sat down, there was a crossed spirit in that church. Amen. And usually when that happens, it's because uh, uh, somebody important in the church has done something bad, or a whole bunch of people in the church think he has. And that will cause a cross spirit in the church. Come on. Amen. Hey, <clears throat> listen. All kind of churches that are worldly as they, <clears throat> they can be, they don't have a cross spirit in them. Huh? Amen. 
Now, we as holiness folks, we ought to be able to agree. Come on. Hallelujah. It's like the uh, general heard his soldiers fussing and fighting. And he told them, says, gentlemen, the enemy is over there. We need to agree who the enemy is. Come on. Amen. If we want the Lord, we need to agree on something. Would you like to have a miracle? Would you like to have an answer to prayer? Amen. And you haven't been able to get it by yourself? Get somebody to help you. Hallelujah. Well, sometimes the nearest one that you can get is your husband or your wife. Amen. Well, husband and wife ought to agree on some things. Come on. Hallelujah. Uh, Jesus mentions, you know, that they, they need to uh, be together on things, even fasting, that your prayers be not hindered. Huh? Praise God. So uh, sometimes it's your wife uh, or your husband you need to get together and pray with. I told you about how Sister Collins got that letter from Brother Moore and how that she read it and cried and sat down on my lap and we joined hands and we agreed that her hair wouldn't come out and it'd be a sign from God that she's going to be healed. There she is, almost 14 years later, praise God. Amen. God brought her through. Amen. Uh, Didn't lose her hair. A lot of folks didn't know what a miracle that was until right here in the church. Some of them lost their hair two or three times. Praise God. But we agreed. Amen. Hey, the trouble of many a home, a husband pulling one way and a wife pulling another. Huh? Can't expect much power in prayer when that's happening. Praise God. We need to agree. Do you agree that we need to agree? How many agrees that we need to agree? <laughs> hey, man, we agree on something, don't we? We agree that we need to agree. Praise God. How do we need to agree when we come up against something that we can't get prayed through on by ourselves? First off, we need to agree that it's in God's Word to do it. Huh? We need to agree that God promised it. Amen. How many will agree that Jesus said, if any two or three of you agree... On earth is touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Do you agree on that? Everybody agrees on that? Wave at me. Hallelujah. Praise God. (laughs) Ah, yes. Amen. Uh, We can agree on it because Jesus said it. Can we not? Hallelujah. We agree that's in the Bible, don't we? Amen. We agree that it's in the Word of God. God said it. Sometimes we need to agree that God done it before. And since God's no respect of persons, He will do it again. How many agree that the Lord will do it again? He can do it again any time, can He? Hallelujah. Ooh, we can agree. Amen. Praise God. We need to agree that it's promised in God's Word, that God's done it before, and we need to agree that God will do it for us. Now sometimes we can pray for other folks, and I've had all kinds of people say, I just have all kinds of faith for other people. I can't have faith for myself. Amen. You just need to agree with yourself. <laughs> Amen. Say, self. Amen. We're going to have an agreement on this thing. Amen. Now, self. 
Amen. Get with itself. Praise God. We're going to have agreement on this thing. Amen. We're going to agree that God will do it for you. Me. Say me. Me. Amen. Haven't you got God's breath in you? Huh? Hallelujah. Of course, the devil will come along and say, you can't have it because you sinned. You failed God. You missed God. And you can't have it. Amen. Now, Jesus just told us to forgive our brother 70 times 7. Huh? How many believe the Lord would have us to forgive our brother 70 times 7? Well, I'll tell you how that you can come to agreement on that. Just think how many times the Lord's forgiven you. Has He forgiven you 70 times 7? Huh? Amen. Somebody said more than that. Praise God. Hey, he gone above and beyond, hasn't he? Hey, don't we believe God will forgive us? Oh, glory to God. We need to agree that there's nothing in the way. How do we agree that nothing's in the way? If something's in the way, get it out of the way. Praise God. Get it right out in the open. Amen. If something's in the way, just admit it. Amen. Lord, I'll give it up. Lord, I'll quit it. Lord, amen. Forgive me. Lord, I forgive my brother. Sometimes that's what's in the way. We're carrying a grudge. Amen. <laughs> We're carrying a grudge. Praise God. Woo-wee. And we're chewing on something we need to get loose from. You know why we carry grudges. Get a hold of your seat. I'm going to tell you why, the psychological reason why we carry grudges. Amen. <clears throat> Hang on now. Hey, you got a good hope? Hang on. It's because we're so full of failure ourselves, we're looking for something to blame it on. Or we're looking for somebody that's in worse shape than we are. And we're justifying ourselves. So we carry a grudge. We feel justified in carrying grudge because we're carnal as crowd ourselves. And I like good crowd. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We're carnal on this crowd ourselves. Hey, amen. We need to get rid of all grudging, all unforgiving spirit. Tell me, how long you've been chewing on that thing you've been chewing on? One year? That's too long. Two years? That's too long. Three years? That's too long. Four years? That's too long. How you know it's too long, preacher? Because the Bible said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Hold on now. We ought to clear the slate before the sun goes down. Amen. Hey, we may not wake up in the morning. Hey, we may, we may lay down and go to sleep and somebody come to see what's wrong. We didn't get up and go to work and we'll be laying there cold and stiff. Hey, Amen. McCall didn't wake us. Oh, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't go to bed holding something against somebody. Amen. You see what you hold against that fellow for years, it don't bother him. Chances are he's totally un, Unscathed uh, by it, but it eats on you. Hallelujah! It eats on you. Hey, wipe a slate clean tonight. Wipe a slate clean right now. If there's anything in the way, get it out of the way. Praise God. There ought not be anything in the way and hold his folks home, hold his folks' lives. Hallelujah! Ought not to be anything in the way. <laughs> Hey, if you're so stubborn as to hang on to something that's hindering you, you're going to need help from God someday. You're going to need help from God. And people can pray till they're blue in the face. 
And they won't be able to pray over the roadblock that you've got in your own life. Move it out. Get rid of it. What do we need to agree on? We need to agree that there's nothing in the way. Don't even let it enter your mind. Praise God. Hey, you don't have to question that. Hey, amen. Boy, it'd be wonderful, you know, if the church was all pulling together in one direction all the time. It'd be a sight what we could get done for God. Ain't no sense in having cross spirits, but sometimes it happens. Man, they just fuss and fight and chew on something forever and ever and ever. Amen. Get rid of it. So I just can't. I just can't stand so and so. Yeah. Why can't you? God has to put up with you. Hmm? Preacher's praying, oh God, I can't forgive that woman. She done me wrong. She told lies on me. Lord, I just can't forgive her. God was convicting him of his need to forgive her. Lord, I can't forgive that woman. She told lies on me. And God spoke to him and said, yeah, but what if she knows what I know? He meant she wouldn't even have to tell no lies, would she? Praise God. Hey, forgive him anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get rid of it anyway. God knows every thought. God knows every look. God knows every glance. Come on. God knows every unholy desire. Come on. Praise God. God knows that there's no difference between big sins and little sins. It all comes from the same germ. Amen. Oh, I know. It's a whole lot better for a, for a fella to uh, uh, not like you than to shoot you. I know that. Amen. But, uh, uh, you know, we need to quit fussing about things with each other. Amen. You know what we need to do? We need to leave the folks that's bothering us in the hands of God. Turn him over to God. Praise God. Paul said concerning the church that he was leaving one day, he said, I commend you to God. After a while, we got to turn them over to God. Well, that mean old fellow, he's got a bad old nature. He's got a, a bad outlook on things. I just don't like his spirit. Oh, well, he's right, but I don't like the way he does it. He, he preaches right, but he just it's the spirit he uses. Turn him over to God. Amen. By the way, amen. Uh, right preaching don't always get the job done. Sometimes you got to, amen, get kind of rough. You got to reprove. And then after a while, you have to rebuke. And sometimes, you know, when you rebuke, folks think you're in the wrong spirit. They're like Brother Grayson Lawson, his little grandson said, Papa! Take me to McDonald's on the way to church. We can't go to McDonald's, son. Said uh, it's it, we got to go to church. Papa won't go to McDonald's. And Grayson said uh, we can't go to McDonald's, son. Tonight we we'll go later. Papa won't go to McDonald's. And he said no, we can't. So be quiet. He turned around to his grandma and said, Grandma, Papa's backslid. Amen. And uh, sometimes you know if we have to rebuke. We think so and so's backslid. Amen. Hey, you gotta put it behind you. One preacher said that he didn't see much future for anybody unless they could take rebuke. So sometimes we have to be rebuked. Did you ever see a child that never was rebuked? Hmm? Ain't worth two cents, are they? They live their whole life having never grown up. They say that the, the trouble with the, uh, with the, what do they call this generation after World War II? Baby boomers, yeah, baby. The trouble with baby boomers was that they and their children never did have to grow up. Ooh. Amen. It's better not to take too long to grow up. Amen. Hallelujah. 
you got to learn to <clears throat> get hold of your seat again. Amen. This kind of rebuke. Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> I ain't backslid. Amen. Some folks think they were just sliding forward. But I ain't backslid. Praise God. Sometimes you got to hush up. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know how many it takes to quarrel? <laughs> Two. If just one will keep your mouth shut, it'll stop. Most of the time. There's some folks I know that they, they can start a quarrel, ask questions and answering it themselves. If you don't answer them, they'll answer it for you. Amen. And uh, so I don't talk. And somebody pretty close to me sometimes asks questions to me and I don't answer. And so she will answer it for me. She'll put words in my mouth. Amen. I ain't going to tell you who it is. Amen. But sometimes she would argue with a signboard and paint it herself. Amen. Hey, <laughs> there comes a time, praise God, we need to be quiet. <laughs> sometimes I don't answer folks. They tell me that sometimes I don't answer until the next day. <laughs> That's because I didn't have nothing worth saying. <laughs> I'm kind of slow, to tell the truth about it. Amen. I'm just kind of slow, and it takes a while for me to assimilate. You see, when you just got one MB RAM, and it's all, I mean, I don't mean four, I don't mean eight, I don't mean sixteen, thirty-two, uh, uh, Dave Hamilton upgraded my wife's computer, amen, to, to forty RAMs. Amen. Boy, that thing runs fast. But it didn't do nothing for a brain. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, amen. I just got one MB RAM. Amen. I, I run on more than one track, but it's just one track at a time. That's all. Amen. And sometimes I don't answer real quick because I didn't have nothing. Well, I wish I was sharper. I wish I had more wit. I wish I was just a little bit quicker on the draw. But I might misuse it. I might be sharp with folks. So sometimes I just don't say anything. Amen. Brother Cook said I asked him a question one time, said he answered me the next day. Sometimes I'm so long in answering they forget what they asked. <laughs> Hallelujah. Takes two to argue though. Most of the time the quarrel ends. Amen. If <laughs> somebody Hushes up. Amen. I'm just talking about agreeing. Do you agree? Hey, amen. If you get much from God, you're going to have to agree. If you pray together and you get that prayer answered, you're going to have to agree. Amen. One critical time in our lives. It's happened other times, but this one time we remember. Amen. My wife and I agreed. On something big, a need in her life. We agreed. We joined hand. We didn't question about the possibility, Brother Croucher. We didn't question about the promise. We knew we had the promise. Do you know we got a promise that God will answer prayer? You know that we've got confidence in what we ask of Him. He will do it. do we have that? Ooh, if we're walking in the light, we've got that confidence. Hey, amen. If you got a spirit of doubt, ask God to forgive you for it. If you got a spirit of unbelief, ask God to forgive you for it. If you got sin in your life, ask God to forgive you for it. Get rid of it! We need to agree! You got a cross spirit about something that's going on in church? Amen. You're not being used. You're being forgotten. You're, you're not being complimented. You're not being given credit where credit's due. Did you know God's got a reason for all those things? He's trying us. Trying our spirit. All you gotta do is keep a good spirit and survive. And I'll guarantee you, Amen. You'll be recognized. 
I guarantee you, you'll get your credit. Somebody will see it. And you don't even have to blow your own horn. Amen. You know, the old chimney corner scripture is, He that tooteth not his own horn, the same shall not be tooted. And so we got preachers up and down the Miami Valley that's all deformed trying to scratch their own back and blow their own horn at the same time. Amen. Hey, amen. Yeah, you don't have to do that. Just go on with God. Just stay steady. Just stay true. Amen. Agree on the promise. If God ever done it for anybody, He'll do it for us because God's no respect to person. He said in more than one place, God's no respect to person. He said to half a thousand places, there's no respect to person with God. If that be the case, we can agree. And hey, when we agree on something, if it just happened at that time not to be God's will, He'll speak to us and tell us. Amen. I was praying for a sister in Kansas City several years ago, and she said, I know the Lord's whipping me. She sat in a wheelchair in bad shape. She said, I know the Lord's whipping me. I said, what's He whipping you for? She said, I don't know. Wouldn't it be a bad old mom and daddy that just kept whipping that child? He didn't know what they was whipping him for. <laughs> Amen. No, no, no. God's not always whipping us and telling us. Hey, man, it's like Brother Tozer or, 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 or Tory was uh, uh, having a pre-revival prayer meeting and everybody was confessing their sins and getting their sins under the blood, you know, and getting ready for revival. And, hey, man, one man was sitting right straight up in the crowd and wasn't praying, and he went back to him and he said, Haven't you got any sins to confess? He said, I can't think of any. He said, Well, just guess at it. And he said he guessed it the first time. Praise God, everybody knows. <laughs> Already. He he just didn't want to. He just didn't want to give it up. Praise God. Hey, get rid of it. Glory to God. Hey, I agree. Praise God. Hey, you're going to have to come to agreement even if you pray by yourself. When I was coming home from Mobile, Alabama, bleeding ulcers, I was fasting. That's the wrong thing to do. Everybody else eat hamburgers, and I stopped and bought them stuff to eat, and I was fasting. That's the wrong thing to do. You got ulcers, because you have to lubricate them, you know. Amen. Man, I drank a lot of half and half. Draw a lot of Pepto-Bismol. And you can get fat with a good set of ulcers. <laughs> Amen. But I had to decide, <clears throat> Amen, that God's promise was mine. And I pleaded the blood. And I pleaded the stripes. And I pleaded the name of Jesus. And I told the devil, I don't come in my own name. I come in the sinless, perfect name of Jesus. I don't come by my own merits. I claim deliverance by the redeeming, sinless blood of the sinless Lord of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I didn't plead my own name. I didn't plead by my own blood. I pleaded healing in the name of the sinless blood, the sinless name of the Holy Lamb of God. And I prayed through. I prayed every promise in the Bible. And I claimed it for mine. And I threw him in the devil's face and I told him he didn't have any right to touch me. I was a child of God. Amen. I went back to work the day after I got home. Praise God. Never had any problem from that day to this with ulcers. I had to get healed every year from ulcers. Me and Brother Gerald took care of the youth camp for years. Amen. And we were just kind of green about it. And his big strain on us, you know. Amen. Had a lot of tension, a lot of stress taking care of youth camp every year. Amen. Especially as ignorant as I was. And my Lord, I'd get those ulcers every year. I'd wrestle with them finally. I'd call the elders of the church. And they'd anoint me and they'd pray for me. And I'd get healed. Well, Amen. The devil caught me, Brother Jerry Wayne, between Mobile, Alabama, and home, and I couldn't call the elders. And I had to pray through myself. 
You're going to have to come to the realization that God's promise is yours. And claim it in the name of Jesus. Hey, now we can't make anybody live for God. But we can enlist a Holy Ghost to deal with them. Our prayers and fastings can't force anybody to live for God. Amen. But we can agree together and stand together and wait on God. And it'll do a better job that way than it will any other way. Woo! Hallelujah. And maybe after we're dead and gone to glory, we'll be like Brother Edward Lackey promised God everything in the book. He'd live for God. He'd serve God when he was in that black forest in Germany. Amen. And the bullets whizzing around him and everybody in his company was killed but him and one more man. Amen. He promised God he'd bring him home and live for God. He said he got on that ship home and he said they fed him kraut and sauerkraut and, and, and wieners and he said everybody got seasick on the way home. And he said, there's sauerkraut wieners all over that ship. Amen. He got home and he forgot about his promise to God. He became a drunk on Skid Row right on Broadway in St. Louis. And his mama died, but no matter when he came home, when she still lived, his dear old mama down there, South of St. Louis on that old town and on the Mississippi River. Praise God. She would see him a coming no matter if she had to close. Have her on the line. Whatever she was doing. She'd drop everything and say, there's my darling boy. Boy, it's a good thing there's mothers in the world. Cause everybody in the world gives up on them but mama sometime. And she held on to God for Edward Lackey. She died and went to heaven. And one night, Brother Lackey was stumbling down the streets of Skid Row, Broadway, St. Louis, Missouri. Amen. He stumbled in the back of a mission where they're singing an old familiar hymn that he'd heard when he was a boy. And God got a hold of that drunken boy's heart. Amen. He said, I went to the altar and God gloriously saved me. And he said, I'll tell you what I believe happened. He said, the Bible said our prayers in in them golden vials up there in heaven. And he said, I believe God uncapped one of them golden vials. And he said, that's that mother's prayers for Edward Lackey. Amen. Edward Lackey is that assembly God pastor in Bunker, Missouri. When my mother was sick and in the mental institution of Little Rock, Arkansas, I said, let me know when she's healed, son, so I'll know when to quit praying. Amen. The psychiatrist didn't give us any hope, said she loses ground quicker than she gained it. Amen. All the ground she gained, she loses it. This is the last words to me and my brother in 1954 when we left the hospital. He said, it seems that she don't want to get well. He didn't give us a very good report. Amen. That was Christmas in December. We went to see Mama. I got a letter. In January, after that psychiatrist's report. Amen. That was after Brother Lackett said, let me know when she's healed. So I'll know when to quit praying. Praise God. That's what a prayer warrior he made. Amen. And God brought her out. Hallelujah. I got a letter from the hospital that said, your mother's condition has reached the ultimate. You can come and get her any time you want to. It's your nearest convenience. Ooh, what an answer to prayer. What a move of God. Amen. Brother Lackey wasn't always that man of, of prayer. Here he is. He's a drunk on Skid Row. And God's saving him. He said, I'll tell you what I believe happened. God uncapped one of them golden vials with those prayers in it. And said, that's, that's Miss Lackey's prayer. He said, where is he at? Amen. Said he's down there on Skid Row. Said go get him. Praise God. Amen. And God brought him in. Hey, he tumbled back in a puddle of glory in his own words. Amen. God filled him with the Holy Ghost and made a preacher out of him. He answered that mother's prayer after she was already dead and gone to heaven. 